Hello everyone, once again I welcome you all to MSP lecture series on transformational chemistry. Uh, ever since I started discussing on classification of ligands by donor atoms, I had no option other than writing lot of equations. Probably it may be boring or you may think it is a uh, you know, lot of memory is needed. No, it is not true that is the reason uh, in my previous lecture I showed you how you can see depending upon the lateral movements of electrons between the atoms where electron density resides more, where electron density resides less and how the bond is polarized based on that one when you are using a substance, when you are using a reagent, uh, how again that reagent polarizes before it attacks the coordinated uh, atoms. So that in order to stress upon those things, uh, I have no option other than writing some of these equations. Let me continue doing that one of course it is inorganic chemistry, inorganic chemistry is incomplete without chemical equations, especially balanced chemical equations and then once we know how to write balanced chemical equations, we should also see the mechanistic path and all those things. For that one understanding the sequence of reactions is very, very important. Now let us look into uh, some more reactions uh, of coordinated NO. Let us take a simple coordinated NO coordinated complex pentacyano nitrosyl complex two minus charge use a base here the slow step and of course if you add h it will come back it is a reversible reaction. minus now and again add one more and 4 minus. So, let us consider the same starting metal complex and add Rs minus so that we can make better comparison between these two reactions. With uh, uh, thiols, when you treat uh, nitrosyl compound with thiols, it turns red color and that is used for the detection of Rs minus species or Rs minus anions. From that point of view this is a very important reaction. Let us consider one more reaction here. Treat this one with SO3. So, reaction of nitroprusside with sulphide to form nitrosyl sulphito is the first example of a coordinated NO reported by this gentleman Bodecker in 1861. And of course, this has a very long NS bond. The the NS bond distance is around 1.82 angstrom units. So, now let us look into the electrophilic attacks example consider H plus or Me, they can attack either N or O on a coordinated uh, nitrosyl ligand. Let us look into both the cases.
this is osmium on treatment of this one with HCl it forms a compound of this type. Now you know H plus has attacked N. Now let us look into another example, a bipyridyl complex 2 2 dash bipyridyl complex of ruthenium. While noting down these reactions, you shall also practice electron count, probably all reactants and products you should do electron count so that you will be familiar with this electron counting method. And we can also have a bridging nitrosyl complexes where N bridges two metal centers. What would happen if electrophilic attack occurs on a bridging NO? Let us consider one example here. So this is derived from RU3CO12, a neutral carbonyl cluster. So now when you are replacing 2 carbon monoxide with 1 NO, NO is a 3 electron donor. So it is in short of one more electron as a result it carries a negative charge here. So when you treat this one with uh, CF3, SO3ME. it forms a complex of this type. I think uh, this much information will do about uh, nitrosyl ligand and the preparation of uh, nitrosyl complexes and their further reactions with various uh, reagents such as electrophiles and nucleophiles. Now let us move on to nitrido complexes. You consider NH3, NH3 is there and if from NH3 if you remove one proton, one hydrogen, then it becomes NH2 minus amide and then if we remove one more, then it becomes imide and then if you remove the last hydrogen, then it will carry a negative charge and 3 minus, then this is called nitride. Nitrido complexes are also known. In fact, uh, nitride is a 6 electron donor, is one of the strongest P donors known. And if you just look into M triple bond N distance are in the range of 1.6 to 1.8 angstrom units. And the coordination modes I have shown here, it can bridge two metal centers in this fashion or it can also bridge three metals mu3. It can also bridge four metal centers and, and uh, there are examples where these four metals are arranged in a tetrahedral arrangement something like this. So we, we come across this kind of mu4 bridging and of course it, it, can, it can also bridge 3 metal centers in this fashion keeping the lone pair intact so it can go to another one. So if you see here uh, it is typically like a ammonia here, it can be nicely compared to ammonia we have covalent bonds, 2 electron covalent bonds are there and then still this lone pair is intact. Now this can act as a metal ligand. So these are some of the very very important coordinating modes of nitride ligand. Now let us look into the synthetic methods. 
So, for this one usually we are using metals in their high oxygen states. So, when this uh, tertiary butax alkoxy derivative is treated with isocyanide, it forms two complexes, one is nitride complex, other one is alkylidine complex, alkylidine complex. And if we take osmium tetroxide and treat with base, it can also form a nitride complex. So, it is giving uh, 3 electrons as a result one negative charge is there on this one and of course, whenever we write like this you should understand that we have something like this a triple bond between metal and nitrogen. Similarly, we can also make uh, nitrides having other ligands such as cyclopentadienyl ligand. So, here uh, we have chosen a Cp star, Cp star means pentamethyl cyclopentadienyl. Of course, here is this is also called aminolysis reaction. These are some of the important uh, methods of preparation of uh, nitride. And as I mentioned here, if we can also make dianionic compounds of N, for example, Rn2 minus is there. So, this is also very important ligand in some metal complexes that can be used in metathesis and also in some organic reactions. So, let me give the preparatory methods of imido complexes. If you take tungsten tetrachloride, oxy tetrachloride and treat with RnCO, it forms Here uh, we have double bond between tungsten and nitrogen. Treat this one with uh, amide, secondary amine. We have on N1 trimethyl A group and tertiary butyl group. So, here okay. of course, if you keep it for prolonged time it loses one molecule of water and it forms Me3 hexamethyl diceloxane it forms. So, here also we have rhenium to nitrogen double bond.
take this compound and treat this one with uh, a typical amine, aryl amine. Usually uh, here aryl groups considered are very bulky ones. Let me give one more example here. One can also make imido complexes starting from an organic azide such as phenyl azide. Let us consider venadocene. Here we have CPs, pentamethyl cyclopentadienyl, we have chosen. Or in general one can also start with a nitride complex like this. Treatment of this one with uh, reagents such as methyl lithium can give a salt having imido bond. Okay, so, these are some of important reactions one can use to generate imide complexes and also I showed you earlier nitrate complexes. So, what are the other ligands that we have not touched when it comes to nitrogen donor ligands? We have plenty of uh, uh, macro cycles are there and also having heterodonor atoms are there. For example, we have N O ligands are there and we have S and N donor ligands are there and of course, N O P ligands are also there. And there are macro cycles where we have donor atoms such as P, N, S as well as O. So, it goes with our uh, imagination and also the availability of appropriate reagents to make a variety of macrocyclic ligands having versatility in its coordination behavior having several different donor atoms. And why people work with macro cycles is macro cycles have a marked kinetic stability compared to corresponding monodentate ligands and also they can stabilize metals in very unusual oxygen states because of uh, chelate effect or encapsulation and also they are very uh, thermodynamically stable from this point of view and also they can be very robust and also when we make macro cycles and, and we will be having a suitable cavity and uh, the size of cavity is also very very important and, and uh, when, we, when we choose a right metal of suitable size that fits into the cavity again stability increases. So, from that point of view when we want to make a macro cycle or a cage like structures for a particular uh, metal encapsulation, we have to keep all these things in mind to make sure that optimum size is left for metal to occupy that coordination site. And among amines, we have diamine is there, ethylene diamine is there, uh, triethylene diamine is there like that there are plenty of amines are there. Let me show you a couple of examples here. So, a typical nickel complex is there and all are uh, neutral uh, donor nitrogens. So, this is a cationic plus 2 charge. There are other type of compounds as well where one side the chain is open having a NH2 moiety. Of course, in this case completing the structure should not be any problem. So, now this is another tetraentate ligand. The advantage of these things are we can do further reactions on bound amine groups and of course, we are all familiar with the skiff based ligands are very very important in coordination chemistry. Skiff based can have either nitrogen 
completely or nitrogen and also oxygen donors or sometimes they can be anionic complexes also provided we have some protons that can be readily dissociated like OH group is there, SH group is there, they can act as anionic ligands also. The typical preparation of skiff bases involve the condensation of a ketone with amine primary amine so this is a typical reaction that is used in making a variety of skiff bases let us look into how one can also generate a skiff base with amine ligands bound to the metal center So let us consider this cationic complex and treat this one with 4 equivalents of ketone. You can see here the formation of a skiff base with bound ethylene diamine ligands. What would happen if here both the sides are open? One can also perform reaction only one side is open. Let us consider another example here with copper 2 plus ion. So, this one let us treat with the two equivalents of ketone here. This results in the condensation of course, rest of this part does not participate in any reaction whereas here So, this happens here. So, like this on bound amine ligands one can also perform skiff base reaction to generate the corresponding skiff bases. Let me continue talking little bit more about nitrogen donor ligands especially giving some emphasis for macrocyclic ligands in my next lecture before I conclude on nitrogen donor ligands and move on to oxygen donor ligands. Until then have an excellent time uh, reading coordination chemistry and try to understand the classification of ligands by donor atoms.